the frame, the set axis assembly, the heated bed, and the XY kinematics are complete. So there is only one thing left to make that beast print, the carriage. So let's see what we have to put in here to make that thing go. The wonderful Slice Engineering Magnum Plus and Bontec QRM extruder that I'm already using on my other big printer, the hot end cooling fan and the part cooling fan, the bed leveling sensor and an olive. There is an assembly order that I need to remember, because of course I didn't write it down. Who do you think I am, an organized person? Before installing the carriage on the machine, we can still do a few things comfortably at the workbench. The first one, installing the bed leveling sensor. Next, the hot end cooling fan. And I can also assemble this bracket in here with the part cooling fan and its funnel. I will need these two nuts later, but I won't be able to install them once they are on the printer, so I'm happy that I remember to install them now. The last thing that I can install on the carriage before installing the carriage on the printer is this board in here. This is a Duet 3 Toolboard 1LC, more on this later. I will fasten this one in here with these tiny spacers. I also wired the part cooling fan through the carriage and added the connectors for both fans and also the extruder and hot end, so it's time to get this on the printer. That's what those nuts in the back were for. Let's install now the awesome Magnum Plus from Slice Engineering with which I can already print up to 4 kilos a day on my other printer and we'll see how far we can push it on this one. The next step is to wire the carriage to the mainboard. And I've been thinking about doing a standard drag chain setup, but I will still have the problem of bringing the filament to the carriage. Because if you try to pass the filament through these tight bands, the filament could break, and also compressing the filament will put too much pressure and create a lot of friction. So I was going to do the same setup as my other big printer. But the thing is that on this one, the movement is one dimensional. The carriage just has to follow the X axis. And on this one, it has to follow the entire XY plane which makes it quite more complex. But I think I have a solution. To avoid the tight bends on the drag chain, I'm going to use one of these wire guides, fish tape. And this time I got a beefier one and this one has a steel plate inside, which makes the bend directional, but it's going to be a little bit tougher to cut. This is a 10 by 20 drag chain and I think it's the smallest one that I can get away with because I tried a 10 by 10 and things got wobbly really fast. Let's see if we can fit in here everything we need. I need to pass this PDFE tube through the drag chain, but it's too curly, so I think I have an idea.
the great thing about the Duet Toolboard is that instead of the 18 cables that I should have brought up to here, I can get away with just four. Two for the power and two for the CAM boost data. The carriage is wired and fed and obviously this printer is going to eat a lot of filament, so it must have a filament runout sensor. Funny anecdote, this one doesn't have one. So I've used Onshape to design one. Onshape is accessible across all operating systems. I just opened the browser like Google Docs and started working on it right away. It's great to work with teams or working from home, and you can collaborate with team members and suppliers at the same time on the same document, no matter where in the world you are. Data management is built in, so you don't have to worry in which computer you left your design. And with its GitHub-inspired branch merge model, you can branch your models with the same ease as your branch your ideas. In my case, uh, a lot. It is built for businesses and it has industry-leading manufacturing-specific features for sheet metal and frame-based design, as well as surfacing, configurations, and detailed drawings. Onshape is always improving. You get new releases every two weeks with new features and functionality. I highly recommend engineers and product developers watching to use Onshape for their business. You can try it out for free at onshape.pro slash Miranda. And now let's send some filament. Everything is connected, so let's switch it on and see if it catches fire. Everything seems connected as it should, so let's start with the homing sequence. First, the y-axis. X axis, it doesn't matter too much if the X and Y axis are home precisely, but the Z axis has to be home spot on, so the first layer is perfect. That's why on this printer I have a three phase Z axis homing sequence. For the first phase, sensorless homing, let's imagine that we did something very heavy from one of the corners and now the bed is all twisted and crooked. Sensorless homing will leave the bed until each one of the motors has crashed against the frame. This is also useful in cases where, for example, you left your tool in here. Because nothing breaks. And it fixes itself. Now that the bed is more or less leveled, we need to find the z-axis zero at the center of the bed with the probe. and now we know where the zero of the z-axis is. But the bed is still not leveled because we just crushed the four motors against the frame, which means that the bed is as leveled as my building abilities, so we can agree that it's not perfect. But we have one motor in each corner and a probe on the carriage, so we can probe each one of the corners near the belts to bring the belt to a perfect level.
And that's it, the printer is ready, so let's print something! First print out of the printer, not bad, 38 minutes, but this printer is made to print big and fast, so let's see if we can improve on that. Point 0.6 layer height, 14 minutes, but we can do better. Point 0.8 layer height, 9.5 minutes, that's what I'm talking about. I also did print a couple of chip cubes, one with insane speed settings and the other one at regular speed, just to see the difference in quality. I'm pretty happy with the final result. All in all, I'd say that the printer is finished, that there is still one video left where I fixed every single botch that I did during this build so I can share the files with all of you and also show you what this printer can do. For example, scale this up a lot. And now please go and make something!